You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are watching, listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz, your host. Will the January effect, will it carry through to February? Good question. Right now, it's February 21st. The markets are getting creamed, and perhaps the January effect has run its course. Let's find out from our good friend at thetechnicaltrader.com. And that would be Chris Vermeulen. Chris, great to have you back on. So is the January effect uh, sputtered out or will it continue? Yeah, thanks for having me, Kerry. I, yeah, when you look at the markets, I mean, we obviously had a, a very strong January for stocks. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if we're sputtering out here or not. We are seeing quite a bit of panic as you and I are talking in the market. The stock market's down about almost 2% on the NASDAQ. But we are seeing panic selling today on the on the New York Stock Exchange, which is like a ratio that I use, a volume flow. Uh, people are dumping shares. The, the VIX is up. Um, usually that's a sign that the market is actually trying to find a bottom. But people are just kind of panicking out. And when you look at the SP500 on the daily chart over the past you know, two and a half weeks, it's created what I call what is a, more or less an ABC correction, which is a three-wave pullback. Um, today's low is breaking the low from about a week and a half ago. And that lower low is what creates a lot of panic selling in the market, which is what we're seeing right uh, right now this week. And also price has fallen on the SP500 to the 50-day moving average, which in the past has acted as a very strong level where institutions step back in or where investors like to move back into the market. So, you know, as much as people are fearful today, the stock market, I think, is on the verge of having a pretty strong rebound. But again, we need to see if it can get traction this week. It could be the start of a very big rally that lasts maybe another month or so. And I was talking to subscribers this morning, pointing to about a 6 to 10% rally in the SP500 if the stock market can turn around this week and start going higher. So the chart is still very bullish. Uh, it's just short-term wise, people are panicking today. And I mean, the headline news I saw this morning are people talking, they think World War III started or World War 3.1 with the semiconductor chip war, um, you know, and, and the Fed raising rates, all these things. So there's definitely a lot of negative news, I think, creating a, some extra fear that maybe it's not that severe. And I think people might be just making an emotional trade uh, kind of today, just kind of purging their portfolio, scaring themselves out of the markets. All right. So uh, the future is always uncertain. What are some indications or indicators that you see that that the market might be ready to rebound? Yeah. So when we look at the markets, I mean, we still see the the growth sector, the growth stocks uh, performing better. So the last time we had a buy signal in the market, the SP 500 actually was kind of leading the way higher. We generated some um, some returns back in November, uh, where the Nasdaq floundered. The Nasdaq I look at as the growth stock sector. It's you know technology, biotech, fast moving companies. Um, it really floundered in the last go around. Well, since the January rally has taken place, growth stocks have led the way. We've seen the Nasdaq lead its way higher. We've locked in some nice gains with our Nasdaq uh, position. Uh, we've got into some of the Arc ETFs. Uh, up over 15% since we got in. We're seeing semiconductor ETF has been doing very well, hit some of our targets there as well. So we are seeing money flow into the growth stocks. And the fact that the, the NASDAQ is holding up much better and higher than the SP500 is still telling me that money is still wanting to move into the stock market. It's what I call a, a complacency rally. This complacency rally is the general public is kind of just moving back into stocks thinking 2022 was the bear market. They think it's over. They're positioning themselves in the highly leveraged plays again. And um, I think there's opportunity still to the upside there. But it's just, I think, a complacency rally that might last another several weeks or potentially a few more months. And the stock market could have that big gain of 6 or 10% from here. 
But after that, I think it's going to be lights out and the stock market goes a lot lower into a stage four decline, something very big. The last time we had a stage four decline was, you know, 2001, uh, also 2008. So these don't happen very often. They're usually looked back at as a, as a crisis. Uh, but really, all it is is a full blown bear market, a kind of a reevaluation event of assets. Uh, so I think that could be coming later this year, which bucks the trend of what, what we were talking about, about the January effect of January is positive, the year should be positive. Uh, my analysis and what the different sectors are doing are, are pointing the other direction in a pretty severe way. So uh, that's the nice thing about technical analysis is it really doesn't matter which way things go because we just follow price. Uh, right now, the market is still in an uptrend. It's pulling back to support, and we just need to see if it's going to find some traction and continue to go higher, or if this trend is going to end and we look for an opportunity to, to profit as the market falls. So, I mean, it really just comes down to actively managing your risk and, and positions. All right. Well, that's interesting. So, so because the consensus, obviously, is that we had a dead cat bounce in January and things are going to go lower. But, uh, you know, the old saying, stocks climb on a wall of worry. We mm -hmm. couldn't have had any greater wall of, wall of worry than during uh, January. And sure enough, they did. So at what point is the consensus right? And at what point is it wrong, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. How do we figure that out? Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, really... Uh, how everybody reacts to news and what they do is just uh, very hard to predict. Uh, I like to follow what telling us what people are doing. Um, overall, when you look at the markets, I mean, we've been seeing the U.S. dollar index start to rally. It's pretty much had an inverse relationship all of last year with the stock market. So stocks are falling. The dollar is rallying. And of course, that strong rally in the dollar has put a lot of pressure on, on gold, silver and miners. And and everything right now has just been stretched kind of to the limit, uh, meaning stocks have pulled down to a critical support level. Uh, gold and silver and miners have pulled down to a critical support level. The dollar is pushing and testing resistance. So everything is kind of at an extreme. And the question is, are they all going to fall back in line to the previous trends that we had over the past month and a half, two months, which would be stocks start to rally, gold miners rally, the dollar falls. Uh, or are these trends all breaking and we're going to see stocks break through support, the dollar bust through resistance and start to rally? Uh, and, and that's the big turning point. That's where we are right now. We need to see what's going to happen. The bias still right now is still long equities and uh, growth stocks continue to hold up actually very well, considering um, the type of fear that's in the market. They're they're not just collapsing. They're they're holding their strong bullish patterns or multi-week patterns pointing to higher prices. So we just need to see if this is a bit of a shakeout, the market trying to buck out traders before uh, it starts to run higher. Yeah, that uh, would be my inclination to think because everyone else is scared. You know, the old Warren Buffett, uh, hey, he invests when there's blood in the streets, right? Yeah. So let's take a look at some other markets that you follow. So interest rates, what's the uh, call here, Chris? Yeah, I, I, I mean, whatever, like say the ten year, ten year uh, Treasury note is going to do. I mean, uh, I think it uh, it could potentially top out here, um, you know, around the four dollar. Maybe maybe goes a little bit higher, but I think it might trade sideways the the, the ten year note, and that'll put a kind of a, a stop in the dollar from rallying, and that'll allow I think the markets like stocks and I think the precious metals markets to potentially come back to life and bounce. Overall. I mean, what they're talking about, you know, a very soft ceiling at like 5.1% for interest rates. Uh, I mean, that's not good for bonds. Uh, you know, so I do think there's still potential more rate hikes to come. And um, it, it's going to really affect the real estate market. I know a lot of people getting into real estate still, which it blows my mind because we're, to me, like the bubble has popped and uh, interest rates going up. The mortgage payments are so big on on properties. Uh, when people need to renew or even to get into a new place, it doesn't even cover the rent. Uh, the, the rent doesn't cover the cost. So there's a lot going on. I think rates are going to continue to hold up or move higher until we get into that stage four decline, a very big dramatic waterfall sell-off where trillions of dollars are, are lost on a weekly basis. 
And um, then the Fed's, I mean, he's loaded, they've loaded their gun. They got a ton of quarter basis point cuts that they can use to try to slow the falling market. Uh, at that point, um, I think that's when we're going to start to see uh, the rates start to fall. But uh, they're just loading their gun full of lots of uh, rate cuts down the road. And um, they're trying to fight that inflation. So uh, I think we're just going to continue on this trajectory. I think things are starting to slow in terms of rates. I don't think they're going to keep, you know, moving up at a very fast pace at all. But um, they still have lots, lots of potential to to raise more and or just hold them at the level that they're at. Yeah, well, they could do that, but you know, like as the rates go up, international borrowing costs, costs of capital, go way higher, and we have company countries that will start to see blow up as a result. So it's not just the United States that the Fed has to be worried about; it's the entire global monetary system. Mm -hmm. And so there's at some point they just can't raise any higher. The damage that they're going to inflict upon the system. Uh, will be far worse than uh, what it is they're trying to fix here. Yeah. Now I think uh, they're just going to learn to live with inflation and love it because it makes <laughs> uh, the easier to pay off the debt, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, so gold, silver, what are we looking at? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Gold Terra Resource Corp. is a gold exploration company that has assembled a highly prospective district-scale land position on the doorstep of the city of Yellowknife in Canada's Northwest Territories. Gold Terra is currently focused on expanding and delineating gold resources at the company's Yellowknife City Gold Project with the goal of discovering over 5 million ounces. With ready access to infrastructure and multiple high-grade gold discoveries, Gold Terra is on track to re-establishing Yellowknife as one of the premier gold mining districts in Canada. Gold Terra trades as YGT in Toronto and YGTFF on the OTC. For more information, go to goldterracorp.com. That's goldterracorp.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Yeah, I mean, gold is, is still, I, I think, a, a lot more of a struggle before I think it kicks into something a lot bigger. When you when you look at it on the long term chart, you go back and you can look at the rally from 2008 and then the multi year kind of bear market or correction uh, from, you know, 2013 all the way to, to 2019. Uh, we've broken out of that phase. And, and from a long term standpoint, the chart still looks really good. But if we do go into a stage four decline in that means everyone starts dumping stocks. It's a full on bear market or a real big kind of downdraft. I think it's going to pull the uh, the precious metals market down with it. And I, I think gold could could pull back fairly significantly still. And, and it would still be in a very strong bullish pattern. I think gold could fall back to 1600, uh, potentially 15 or 1400, depending on how ugly things get um, during a, um, a big bear market phase. I think it'll be short lived. I think it'll be nothing more than just force liquidation of, of margin calls and, and pure panic. And then it'll rebound and take off with a vengeance and, and start something much, much larger, a multi-year rally where gold gets 27, 3,500 um, or, or beyond that. So I think it's everything is still in for a very rough ride. Gold has done very well in the last several months, but overall it's still making a series of lower highs, lower lows. When you look at the long-term picture here and, um, if the dollar is going to take off because of falling uh, stock market and, and people are looking for a defensive play, that's going to put pressure on metals. So I like them long term. I think gold, silver miners are all much closer now to a very big rally than they have been for many years. But I still think this year is a transition year of it, trying to find a bottom and uh, trying to start that new uh, rally. OK, so what about energy, oil? in particular. Uh, right now, just under 80 bucks. Everybody seems to like this level. Mm -hmm. a lot. It seems to be doing a, a bit of a sideways channel here since it's a major volatility of uh, the past couple of years. Uh, you seeing anything uh, noteworthy? I, I, yeah, it's just trading sideways in a, in a range. I mean, we obviously had that kind of big blow off phase in early 2022. I, I don't see oil having any big move. I think it 
the fact that it's floundering and just trading sideways in what you could argue is a uh, just a pause, a bearish uh, bear flag or a bearish uh, pattern, it is pointing to lower prices for crude. You know, if things continue to slow, we get into full on recession mode, everything's going to come down to a grinding halt and we're going to see transportation uh, drop right off. We're going to see traveling. We're going to see shipments or sales of goods, which require petroleum to ship them, deliver them, produce them. So I think I think crude oil has got a struggle ahead of it. And I think it it will eventually break to the downside and continue to slide. And we could see it back down in that 60 maybe even $50 range um, later this year, which um, obviously isn't good for energy companies. That's below the the cost of production for a lot of um, energy companies. So, and you look at natural gas, I mean, it is completely deflated. It's fallen out of bed and it's, uh, you know, just completely crushed in terms of price action. So we're just definitely, the energy sector, I think is going to eventually sell off in a big way. I think right now they're charging premiums. Everybody's charging a premium for products and services. Uh, it doesn't matter what you want, the inflation, the, the rates, the energy companies are still making really good money. Um, but overall, I think that it's going to catch up eventually. The energy sector is going to collapse in a pretty big way. Yeah, well, Charles Nenner is calling for a bottom in that gas of dollar uh, eighteen per uh, million BTUs. Dollar dollar eighteen. Yeah, that's that's way down there. I mean, I, I could see it going down to a dollar fifty, uh, probably no problem. I mean, that's that's not out of the norm. I mean, we've seen it down that dollar sixty, dollar seventy, dollar fifty area many times. And um, I've talked about this big cycle, this kind of huge blow off phase in natural gas that happens every about three or four years. And this one was a big one, just like the other ones. And it's fizzling out, and now it's down at this level. And I think it'll do a lot like what the VIX does generally in a bull market, it just keeps kind of going lower and lower and lower and works its way down. Um, there's a lot of unwinding, I think, to go in, in the natural gas space, which, um, yeah, is still is still quite a ways down from where it is. So uh, he's probably not that far off from, from where it's going to find a bottom. Where's a polar vortex or a bomb cyclone when you need it, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> up north, it hasn't been that bad a winter, has it? No, we've got uh, like no snow here. It's more grass than snow. Usually we're three, four feet of snow. Uh, there's nothing. It's warm out today. It's raining. <laughs> it's It feels like spring. It feels like Easter should be like this coming weekend. <laughs> hey, so any other markets uh, you're following We should uh, that are noteworthy we should take a look at? I think we kind of covered them all. I, I think um, we're just in this big transition right now to see if the stock market's going to get traction. I still like equities. Uh, they need to find a bottom and start to rally this week. And once this panic sell-off kind of unfolds today and uh, throughout this week, and if the stock market starts to rally, I mean, growth stocks are still leading the charge and they're having explosive moves. Uh, so that, I think that's where the focus needs to be until proven wrong. So right now they're just pulling back, they're near support. And uh, if they turn around and start to rally, we could see a very big move. If the stock market's going to rally 6 to 10%, Growth stocks, like especially the ARK ETFs, they're going to rally 15 or 20 percent uh, very easily um, going forward. So there's there's some good potential in in growth stocks, but just got to find that bottom this week. If the bottom breaks and falls out, uh, you know you do not want to be holding stocks. It's going to probably collapse fairly quickly. So if you had to take a guess where the Dow is going to be at the December 31st, 2023, what would you say? December 31st, where will it be? Oh, that is a tough one. Um, I would like to think somewhere around 30,000 or 33,000. <laughs> there could be a big swan dive in between there, like way, way down into the, the low 20,000s. Uh, so um, let's, uh, let's hope whatever happens, it recovers back. <laughs> My gut feel is it's going to uh, finish up somewhere close to where it started the year. That's just yeah, it could. Uh, yeah, it, it could. I mean, based on the January effect, which which actually happens quite often, which means this year should be a positive year, we could very easily see a swan dive and complete chaos this year. And by the end of the year, it rallies back and is almost a positive or slightly positive or flat, flat year. So it's not out of the question. We've seen this kind of move, these kind of moves all the time when the year looks like it's never coming back. And by the end of the year, it's a very strong year. So. Um, 
Yeah, it, I mean that, that's what the odds are favoring based on based on just the January effect alone, and based on my analysis and cycles, it's it's a similar type of scenario. So it's just a matter of surviving the dip <laughs> and not panicking out at the bottom or profiting from from the collapse. Uh, it's yeah. it's the dip that causes a lot of damage. The, the big problem is a stage four decline. If we start this. Um, you know, the last one we had, there was a, a research report done. There was about 6,500 suicides during just between 2008 and 2009, directly related to the drop in equity prices. And that's what could happen again. This this type of drop is going to be so devastating because they happen so few and far between. And they're so severe that um, this is a really serious issue that could happen over the next year. And if people aren't prepared for it. It, it ruins lives, it ruins relationships, it ruins retirements. Uh, I mean, it does a lot of stuff. And I'm, I try to keep telling everyone, it's not about trying to make a ton of money right now. It's about preserving your capital, trying to make some money safely uh, while this market tries to figure itself out. You're better to miss out on, a, on some gains than you are to risk your, your health and your financial wealth, um, your, your retirement just because you want to try and make some money. It's, you got to be very careful. If there's any time to be focusing on position and risk management and, and being really diligent, this is the window because things three, four, five months from now, it could be a totally different story. You just be wishing that you're, you know, sitting in cash or in assets that are rising as the market's falling. So that's the, that's the big takeaway people need to realize is we're at the cusp here of complete annihilation for a lot of baby boomers who are just, buy and hold with stocks and bonds or just trading their own accounts and owning a lot of stocks, they're going to get hit the hardest. And, you know, you put your age in bonds, the right. older you are, the more bonds they typically have. I think uh, they're, they're going to fall still and it's going to be pretty painful. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Chris, the technical traders.com. Go check it out. Subscribe. If you got a question for Chris, myself, shoot us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. We'll get you an answer quick. And uh, when you're at the site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, make sure you sign up for your free newsletter. Chris, always a pleasure. We'll be talking to you again. Thanks, Carrie. Take care. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.